it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're kicking off with Mirage, which is good news to us. No dust too. Hallelujah. Dude, Vince, when I saw the pick ban and I saw that Fnatic removed Dust 2 in the opening phase, I just wanted to... What, what's that one where it's like Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec where he just kind of like holds up his fists? He just kind of smiles accepting.ly like fist, toward... fist What's that? Yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. It's, the Ron, it's, it's like the famous Ron Swanson gif. Like every, everyone knows what I'm talking about. That, that's how I felt whenever I saw that there's no chance we were going to see <laughs> Dust 2 this series. We've cast a lot of it, guys. You yeah. don't have a problem with the map, but we just... We, actually, we're, we're no, I have a personal issue with the map at this point. It's gotten there. Oh, actually, you actually yeah, have a bit of... You harbor a bit of ill will towards Dust 2 now, yes. huh? Yes. Okay, interesting. Well, that aside, we are here to cast Fnatic and Renegades. We have casted Renegades already in the tournament, but we haven't seen Fnatic just yet. So, I mean, coming into this game... Do you have any thoughts from, in particular about who you think will be the favorites to, to take this best of three? I know Fnatic have been looking pretty solid lately. Yeah, dude, they have been kind of taking the world by storm, especially the last couple of LAN tournaments they've uh, played at. They, you know, obviously made the EPL finals through the different group stages there. They took second place at Sydney, beating it teams like NIP and Energy and taking Liquid to the brink, you know, went all five maps in that grand finals. And then, you know, just before that, they had taken second place at the Starladder uh, Season 7 finals as well. Only, you know, taking second to Na'Vi after, again, beating some really solid teams over at NIP Energy and North. So they have uh, really been on top of things. In fact, really the only thing that they've kind of messed up was just the, the major. Obviously, they went out really, really early there. That was super disappointing. Um, getting knocked out by G2, actually, which was kind of shocking. But other than that, man, they've consistently been placing in the top four pretty much every tournament they play in with this lineup. So... It's uh, it's been pretty great to to kind of follow them and, and finally see a Swedish CS team kind of get back towards the top of the rankings. Yeah, it has been a while after Swedish CS really did dominate for for quite some time, and you know, Fnatic they've had their issues. A lot of people had question marks about Exist coming into the roster. Didn't feel like he was the right player to join. Didn't feel like he'd be the right guy to to take on the role of the Fnatic superstar sort of team. How do you think he's fit in? Because to start off with, it did seem a bit shaky. H has he made a believer out of you now, Dust? Yeah, I mean, I think the big reason why everyone was concerned about Exist was because, you know, for one, while he can at times go off as a fragger, he's not known as a really heavy, you know, fragging volume type player. And the other big thing is, is that his in-game leading was always under fire in an IP because it felt like other than when they had really hands-on coaching from Threat or, or someone else really helped kind of steer the strategy of the team, they would often fall prey to just kind of being reliant on kind of like loose default play, not really innovating, not really keeping up with the meta. But I will say, you know, I've, I've studied Fnatic's games lately, kind of watched their demos and, and kind of got, got a feel for the structure of the team. And, you know, I'm not sure if it's exists evolving as an in-game leader this late in his career or if it's Jumpy as a coach really coming in and, and having an influence. But whatever the case may be, once they picked up Roll and Twist, the roles have really kind of shaken down quite nicely for everyone. And this team definitely is a little bit deeper tactically than previous Exist teams, in my opinion. Um, they definitely still can be pretty default, but they definitely have a lot more pacing changes and gimmicks and things that they can throw into their game that uh, make them fun to watch. So I've actually been quite impressed by, again, kind of just the evolution of strategy of this team since uh, they made their most recent roster changes. I'd certainly echo that statement. I also think it's pretty interesting, you know, Twist coming in, that sort of peripheral Swedish player that always had this crazy talent. I remember casting him a lot. I'm sure you do as well. Back in like the Sivo days, and he's always one of those players that seemed to be playing with teams that honestly were kind of beneath him. I don't mean any, uh, you know, to, to cause any stir with that comment, but he always seemed to prefer to play with friends over trying to see how far he could go. Sure. And now that he is with Fnatic, you're starting to see what he's capable of doing. Hey, so Vince, just to, to just to echo that, Twist is actually the number two rated player in the tournament right now. Yeah. So right. he's uh, really doing some heavy lifting for Fnatic. We actually haven't really seen Brolin and Crims come online in a big, big way yet. You feel like once they do, Fnatic is going to be super dangerous this tournament. But yeah, Twist... Number two in rating, I think he's amongst the top five in damage per round and kills per round. So uh, definitely getting in there and doing some big, big things. And Mirage is definitely a map that is most certainly in Fnatic's wheelhouse. It's their most played offline. It's their most successful. They've gotten wins off of big name teams like Astralis and Team Liquid multiple times. They've handled the, you know, kind of other top 15 teams they've played on a pretty regular basis as well. So they're going to feel very much at home here on Mirage. Whereas for Renegades... This is also their best map, man. So this is actually quite the battleground. I was hoping we would see Mirage just kind of thinking of the two teams map pools coming into the band phase. And we were getting right at the top. This was 
actually the pick of Renegades. Uh, so, yep. not sure how much of an advantage they gain by picking Mirage against another very strong Mirage team, but of course, there's always that mentality of favoring personal comfort over counterpicking. So, can respect it. Sure can, but we are going to be hopping live in the first map of today's proceedings. And of course, this first best of three. Renegades kicking things off on the CT side. Fnatic going to be on the Terrorist. And already funneling their way through onto ramp. They only have one flash and a nade to play with as the smokes have just been tossed out over on the jungle and connect this side for going to get a completely free kill so there's some questions asked there the rest of his teammates who should have had his back it was jks that went down without much of a fight liaz now showing glimpses of brilliance yesterday it's isaurus can he wind it back pull off this 1v4 clutch the bomb still hasn't been planted but jw has him dead to rights that was kind of a shock and all type round, Vince. It didn't last very long, kind of over in a snap, just quickly, you know, using those basic smokes at stairs and jungle to isolate the A bomb site and really, really clean entries. Almost a team ace, only exists not involved in the fragging department of that round, but certainly in the construction of it. So that is going to put Renegades onto a little bit of a force buy here. Scout on gratis faction, upgraded pistols and armor across the board for everyone else. Still playing standard positions, though. They're not going for anything gimmicky or a stack or a push. They're just holding all their normal default CT rolls, and they're just going to have to hope that they can make do with little. Yeah, they're really going to have to stretch out these guns. That's one way of doing it, Jacob. Another player we were highlighting yesterday. Connects a 1D, twist. Tagged down to 29, courtesy of the scout. Close range, Azza will pounce. It's all starting to look a little bit worrisome for Fnatic. They're locked in. JKS in the exact same position that he died in the pistol round. But this time, way more effective. Because the terrorists can't get out. They feel choked. They've only got one flash remaining. No more smokes at their disposal. With Brolin also tagged. This is getting so sketchy. Liaz drops down into Sandwich with the UMP. It's a two on one. Twist has the AK-47, but no control of the bomb. And to just add salt to the wounds, there is a smoke in the hands of Renegades, and they've put it down on ramp. So Twist has to turn tail and run. He knows he's in such a bad position here. Yeah, they get attacked just a little bit telegraphed. The Renegades, obviously, in a round like this, they're going to bite early. They're going to make those early rotations as soon as they feel any sort of pressure. And they're able to get some really good kills out the bulk of their line up there, as well as some good utility to really hold Fnatic off. And now Twist forced in a difficult 1v2. He's trying to go all the way around the map, see if he can sneak his way in. But I feel like Liaz and company are aware of this move. Or not, actually. First kill's going to go his way. It's all about where Azza positions. 10 seconds to go. Twist has got to get in here. The timing looking like it's going to work against him. He thinks the last player is on Tetris. Azza is just ringing around the rosy. Well played by him. He's going to be able to get the kill afterwards. This would just be so brutal for Twist. He's going to nice. pre-fire around the corner, but Azza has him. The patience from Azza to wait until after clock. He could have killed Twist at any moment. He had such a good position that Twist was not checking, but again, waits out the clock to get the maximum economic impact. So a patient play is going to be beautiful because look at what Fnatic is left with. Two AKs, a Deagle, a couple of P250s, no real armor on most of the players other than the two AKs. And they just have a couple of splashes and one smoke, basically to go for one quick play. Renegades at such an advantage. They themselves, though, did lose four players, so they have no money left if they were to lose this. One of the main reasons why Fnatic are forcing up, they know that it really is a do or die time, economically speaking, for both teams. Bomb dropped way back towards the T side of the apps, though. They will be getting mid control, but again, Dust, they don't really have much in terms of utility. They've got no smokes no. left, just two flashes. Yeah, it's not going to be able to block off window, connector, really anything. So they're going to be able to get shot in the side, basically, no matter which direction they turn. If anyone gets aggressive on cat or through connector from Renegades. Renegades, though, just still kind of in a, a basic 2-1-2. Kind of holding more passive angles, though. JKS is pushing A ramp right now for information. That's going to help alleviate the rotations just a little bit here for Renegades. Or he might even get a backstab. It's going to come down to Brolin, really, who is actually heading back. They want to split A. They want Brolin to come up ramp with the other's connector. But JKS could get in the middle of this and make this really nasty. There's a big moment. That's going to go the way of Renegades. 
just shy of half a minute. Niaz would have heard JW jumping across now, certainly seen him. 60 health evaporates. As will JKS, but Gratis Faction is holding the line from CT boxes, as is Azza. The jungle works out. And JW can do nothing on his endeavor towards the A side. So Renegades have done it. Keep three weapons alive. Yeah, also just to remind people what this game is for. The win of this moves on to the lower bracket finals of Group B. They will play against the winner of G2 and Energy going on, I think, simultaneously over on the mainstream. And that will be for a quarterfinal spot. Losers at this point go home. They are out of the tournament. So I just wanted to let you know how much this game really means it's Fnatic's on a full save, so not much really to talk about here, Vince. Really should just be a bloodbath. Honestly. And it's faction, solid flick, on to exist, and they're all stuck at the top of the boxes. With blocks, that's pretty much as bad as it gets. The Renegades are going to swiftly brisk past, take a 3-1 mm. lead. Yeah, so finally Fnatic will be able to get a full buy and actually settle in. They are a very fast-paced team, Vince. Even if going for mid-control, they are not hesitant at all just to pry into connector, catwalk, ladder room, and just be very proactive, not hold their ground for an extended period. Also, what you'll notice is, uh, probably not in this round, but Twist has taken over opping for the most part. So JW, a little bit more of an extremity player now, but he'll actually be at middle helping out exist because they want to go for these faster splits. This is the other big thing Fnatic like to do outside of their default mid control is just to go for these quick one, four, two, three splits. The difference between before and now is that I just feel like their executes are a little bit better tuned as far as utility usage and timing. So still can be very dangerous with these explosive plays. Makes that exciting viewing though, JKS. Well, Flashbang still comes out ahead. Spraying through from Twist. We've been here before with Fnatic. They've been stopped before that nade. Lands plumb on the head of Twist. He's going to have to be so careful coming forward. And Azza in the ninja spot with two. All of this rests now on JW. How many kills can he get on the flank? There's one. Does have to fire a bit earlier than he wanted to. Wanted to line up a couple players. Get closer so he can make the most of the first kill to his hands. Now he's got to wrap back around onto Ramp. My Renegades have the advantage. The bomb also drops. Slap bang in the middle of A. It's not easy for that fanatic to get onto. And Crims is stuck in Palace. This is almost looking impossible. As a 14 HP to his name. Trying to use the off angle. Does get caught by JW. Does knock him down to 50 though. In the process. No nades remaining on either team. This smoke going to be up for another couple seconds. Now going to start to dwindle. And Liaz waiting. Crosshair at head height, damage being inflicted, and that should be it. JW gonna have to just run straight for the bomb, hope for the best, hope for some kind of a lineup. And Gratis Faction just knocks him straight down. Four rounds in a row now to Renegade. He wanted to hope in JW. The man is number one in total opening kills for the year and number five in opening kills per round. So even though he can kind of play the extremities like you saw there at middle, he's very good at creating those openings. Unfortunately, it was just too much. Too much had gone wrong for Fnatic throughout the round where JW cannot bail them out of that tough spot. And now the repercussions are that they just have to go for upgraded pistols across the board. Very limited utility. Looks like just going to be a B apartments crash with three players already drifting that direction, two towards top middle, maybe trying to come up cat, but they're going to be denied that space big time with this aggression from Gratis Faction's AWP and Jake on there in the connector. Able to see down through that one-way smoke. Gratis Faction tagged up as well. Motov doing a solid job of keeping JW in underpass. He's going to be joining the rest of his team. Now they're going to collapse on Liaz. Can't see anything. Brolan labored, but does finally get it done with his full 12 bullets. The magazine works out for him, able to turn his attention to Gratis Faction, looking much better for the Swedes. They're going to get the bomb down. All the pressure now falls upon Azza, and he gets completely obliterated from JW's orb at close range. And Jacob and JKS, they're out. They don't want to even attempt this. Leave it to Fnatic to figure out a way to win around like that. Outside of the French teams, it always has felt like some of these these Swedish teams are very well known for their force by effectiveness. Just swarming in the B-bomb site. Good kills from JW and Brolin. Particularly JW being able to pick up a free AWP certainly helped. 
while he's not the main opera these days for the team, he's definitely still certainly capable. And that's a tough one for Renegade. Like that's the one you got to put away to extend your lead. That's kind of the, maybe not a freebie, but that's supposed to be the easier round, and it doesn't come to them whatsoever. Luckily, they still have enough money to be able to fully buy back into things. AWP can be dropped over thanks to Liaz's bank account, so there you have it. The op is going to be in the hands of Twist, as we talked about earlier. And this is where they're going to actually send Twist upper B apartments, not mid. Look for a quick pick over that direction. That's a good spawn for it, but that flashbang may be going to telegraph the play, hence the Molotov instantly tossed in, so... This is going to have no real impact anytime Ooh. soon. Exist in the meanwhile. The leader becomes the entry fragger. Two frags to his name. Gratis Faction and Jacob have been dealt with. Those are two very big picks as well. Gratis Faction in particular. Well, he has at least going to try and maintain balance, but they're going to have to go one more if they want to make that a reality. Yeah, those are some baller entries from Exist, just storming up middle, catching Gratis Faction aggressive off Cat. That's a duel that Exist should be losing nine times out of ten with an AK-47, but pulled it off and even found... Jacob perched behind a smoking connector that gives them the main advantage despite Liaz's frag onto Brolin. Now the rest of Fnatic will be gathering up towards A again. As we noted, very fast pace, no hesitation, very reactive, like to just get in your face once they feel that they have the advantage. Some teams will hold back after a main advantage and kind of play it out patient, but not Fnatic. They want to crash in here. It's going to be up to Az and JKS to try to hold this off by themselves. A little flash is over by Crims. Solid work from Azza and JKS both putting down a kill. It turns this back around now with a bomb down. In favor of the CTs potentially. Liaz is also making inroads over to the CT side. Only downside is JKS only has 25 HP to his name. So flashbang used to try and buy up a little bit of time, get Liaz onto the box. He's gone down. It's all on JKS. He's only got three bullets left and it's not going to be enough. Twist gets the kill, but it's at the cost of four lives from Fnatic. A tense round there. It comes to Twist versus JKS, the number two player in the tournament versus number three player in the tournament when it comes to raiding. So, never really knew who that was going to go, but JKS is in a tough spot being stuck under balcony for so long. Got a pop flash assist from Liaz to try to help him step out. Good for one frag, but just didn't have enough in him to finish off the round. So, Fnatic looking to tie this up as Renegades are on to a save. But Gratis Faction with returning the favor to exist from the previous round, but with the USP. What in the world? Whatever you can do, I can do better. They are now going to push out mid, though. This is where the fairy tale gets closed. In the eyes, in the face of Renegades. They're peeking out one by one. Gratis Faction and Jacob remain. They do have a CZ on Jacob with a bit of Kevlar. And he's making a move around the back of them. He's actually flanking at T spawn as it stands. If Fnatic are a bit labored, they could actually get picked off. Twist in particular with this sniper rifle still positioned at the back of boxes. Only a few more seconds, and Twist could be a dead man. There we have it, Jacob takes him down. JW realizes what's just happened, and Gratis Faction to try and make the most of that. Two kills, really not bad though for Renegade. Certainly not when it's mostly USPs, and Gratis Faction just again, getting some revenge on Exist in the middle there. I don't know what's going on between those two at mid the last couple of rounds, but it's been interesting to say the least, as we do have a pause coming in. I think it's a technical one. So hopefully it's not going to cause too much of a delay as we are all squared up here on Mirage Vince. We actually had a player drop from the server. It is indeed going to be Twist. So I need to see him get back in. He turned off his monitor. <laughs> well, Reasonable. probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> I hear monitor is pretty important. Thomas. Does seem like it would be a key piece of equipment you might need, Vince. So apparently he just needs to restart his game because apparently it bugged his game when he turned off his monitor. So that should be quick. Yeah, you hope. SSDs and everything, you know, should load right up. It was another Swede yesterday that uh, caused, well, I don't want to say it was his fault necessarily, yeah. but it was Rez. We had a massive delay after Rez, and then there was a CSGO update afterwards. You got to love that it. That was probably. lovely. Love to see Seems that. happen every time there's a big tournament, though, right? It's like, yeah, there's a big yeah. tournament, drop an update. I mean, to be fair, there's tournaments every day, it feels like, in CS. I guess it's kind of hard to avoid them, but maybe the big ones you try to steer away. Anyway, it was not that big of a deal. Just had to kind of revert back to an older branch, and we were all good to go. Very small hassle. 
But we're already on pause, it looks like, Vince. Looks like we're getting straight back into things. Full buy for both teams. Op there for Twist. Curious if we're ever going to see a cheeky JWB Apartments play. That's his normal default role, and he is so very good at not just kind of lurking up there and, and kind of holding ground and watching pushes, but creating presence and, and maybe even getting entry kills. Again, one of the opening kill stat leaders for the year on the land environment. So I'm really wanting to see JW cook something up. And actually, he is drifting that direction, Vince. Jake in the meanwhile, though, going to be going straight up mid with JKS on two kills in quick succession fanatic three in a row can they bring it to a fourth if they are it's gonna have to be a three on five clutch jw as you highlighted in the apps we're gonna get smoked off twice can't do anything right now mm. that's actually crazy jk jacob is indeed one of the players that will be kind of an a rotator and play aggressive mid at times but usually jks is at a side anchor so to see him involved in the mid push as well was pretty neat and that's because Gratisfaction was kind of anchoring the site with the AWP. So a good little aggressive play disrupt thing. But here comes JW. That's what I'm talking about. Very dangerous. Lias does get away, though, for now. Dangerous, but not lethal yet. As you say, the warning shot's fired. Lias going to go seek shelter on the B site. Still plenty of time, so Renegades still have to be respectful and keep players on A and mid, respectively. So it is going to be a three-on-two hit for the next few moments. Jacob is making a move, though, into Kitchen very quickly. He is low, and Lias has drilled into Crims. JW missing out on that chance could cost them dearly, especially as Azza once again perched on short B-side. Twist does fire in for one. But he's taking damage, and it's going to be the USP of all weapons from Azza that will silence. Well defended by Renegades, and almost a team ace once more. Everyone's really been doing their job over there for the Renegades. Oh, I need to see his Crims come online, Vince. He's been kind of quiet this tournament. He's one of the top 15 rated players for the year. We talked about just how strong of an end of 2018 he really had and how he was really the best player on Fnatic. Even when Brolin and Twist came on board, he seemed like their most consistent piece, but he has been awfully quiet. Normally an outside A player, normally very good at playing the A side of this map on the T side, but he's had limited impacts. Kind of a buy what you can moment here for Fnatic, but it is limited. Draping the bottom of the barrel. JW gonna find the Desert Eagle headshot. JKS did trade out one before he went the way of Extinction. Gratisfaction while flashbanged. Not through smoke as well. Didn't quite catch it, but he is gonna go down all the same. Crims, the man in question. No doubt he's a powerhouse, but he has been quiet so far on Mirage. Will that change here? This is a map that he is known for being an absolute monster on. JW, who started the round off with his Desert Eagle, may have to finish it too. The bomb's in a really awkward spot, though. It's actually on top of the boxes. Someone's going to have to jump up there, and when they do, they're going to be very vulnerable. In the meanwhile, Lias goes in, lands the headshot onto Crims. What the hell was that? He actually got the kill onto the player that was towards Palace, I think. And he was aiming at JW, I, I, I believe. Now, Matic, with 35 seconds, are going to peace out of their dust. They're heading to B-site. Yeah, they have plenty of time to make this rotation. Eventually, one of Renegades' members, you imagine, will head that way. But they also may think just to stick together. That way, they can get the most out of a retake with all their utility in the kit onto Azza. Giving, you know, two 1v2s to Fnatic would be pretty deadly. So, indeed, they will just stick together for now and concede this bomb plant. Liaz and Azza will be trying to work this thing out. Again, they do have a kit for extra time, but Twist has such a deadly angle on this window. Yeah, you really fancy him to land the shot. There we go. Straight into his crosshair. No doubt. Right in the center of Liaz. And that will send a shock down Azza's spine as he tries to run away, but JW with a deagle. Wow, what a shot that is. Wanted to collect the gun as well, but not quite fast enough. Didn't have the Nikes on, so couldn't make it over there, but that's fine. Still plenty of money to buy up here. AWP back over to Twist. Renegade's money, not in the best shape. Maybe some upgraded pistols coming out, but not really able to buy much. So this gives Fnatic a chance to maybe slide back ahead. This has been a very tight game thus far. Some mid-aggression perhaps here from the CT side. We saw a lot of them stacked up towards window and connector, but they kind of hold back for now. But the underpass push is in play. W. Gonna 
repeat his performance with the first kill of the round. This time the AK is opposed to the Desert Eagle. Of course, with Renegades on basically nothing in terms of investment, it's only a matter of time. This should be a formality. Whether they get any kills is another question entirely. They do have a Desert Eagle for Lee, as we saw how powerful, how prolific that gun can be in the right hands. And speaking of which, JW, the master of it, is on the hunt. DJKS around the corner gets a double spray. Both headshots. As it may get him on the, the retreat, though, and an AK-47 goes into his hands. The downside is he has no Kevlar. So aim punch going to be a real issue, but he's still carving heads out. Beautiful aim on to exist. He's going to make this round sting for Fnatic. Should still be going down to the hands of Brolin, though. If he does peek anymore, but Brolin decides to have a look at jungle. Money's low too, Vince, for Fnatic. Even with the victory, they're bought down pretty low. So rebuying is going to hurt their economy big time. So Azza can do a lot of long-term economic damage here. Roland will find him out with the SMG and print a little bit of extra bonus cash and collect the AK-47. So not bad, only losing two. But yeah, I'm really just liking this wall swap Fnatic made over the last couple of months. Feels like, you know, twists back to his primary opting role like his red reserve days when he was playing alongside Brolin and being a very, very solid player for that team, helping them get to some decent tier two tournament finishes. And then JW, to me, I know he's, you know, can be a really X factor opper, but I feel like his kind of ability to be aggressive as a solo player and just be just a wild card is always something that's very much suited him. And I feel like both players have been performing better in that environment. So it's good to see as we've had Fnatic, you know, being quite successful in the land circuit lately and looking to add another one to their belt with Dallas. But now Renegades is back onto a full buy vent, and they have been playing a pretty good CT side, particularly in the early game. However, Fnatic has won five out of the last six, so they've really had control since they got their economy back in order. Yeah, the rifle rounds certainly have been favoring the Swedes overall. And JW, as you say, like he's been such a versatile player. At one stage, he was known as one of the best orps in the world. Mm -hmm. He can play with the Mag 7. He really printed that gun on the map. And now the, the uh, rifles. Sawed off shotgun on drop cobblestone, I feel that like. That's something he. Yep. Yeah, so all over the place. He likes to evolve his game style. You can really respect that. Speaking of him, he's going through mid, gets the entry. Not the greatest Molotov ever thrown, but he's going to be able to dart away. The Molias is holding on. He's been really impressive for me. Mm. Over the duration of Dreamhack Masters, Dallas. Flick up from Gratis Faction. Neutralizes exist and also Crims. JW's now going to be peeling out of the app. So what a shot again by Gratis Faction. He's feeling it. That's more like it from Renegades. Yeah, you make a really good point about Lee as he has had a really good tournament. He's the next best rated player on Renegades for the tournament after you get past JKS, who's number three in the event. So Lee as is certainly up there. Also worth noting, Liaz leads in a lot of support categories for the year events. He's number four in assists per round on the year. Number one in support round percentage. So sacrificing guns for grenades, using utility, those sorts of things. And he's also put up the numbers so far in Dallas. I stood against Isaurus. He was one of the best players on the server throughout. See if he can continue that form. Here on Mirage, we expected it to be a close one. Both teams very happy to play on this battlefield. And so far, it has delivered. Blocks and Deagles, the order of play for the Swedes. And they are being pretty much obliterated. Not too much they can really do from this. But he's taken Jacob with them, though, Dust. Yeah, this game's turned into a slugfest. I mean, so many rounds are close now. No one's streaked together more than two rounds in the last five or so. So that's really put both economies in a very fragile state going into the final rounds. And this one looks like it's going to get mopped up by Renegades. Sure does. Just a question of how much longer can Exist survive. Does get a Deagle, though. JKS smacked down. So two kills, keeping Renegades honest. And Fnatic are going to have a buy coming up, you think. They have enough. Yeah. Again, this is where I feel like Krems needs to lock in his position. Again, such a good A player on Mirage and pretty much every other T side I've seen Fnatic play. But he has not been here today. Only three kills on this map. Looks like they're going for something faster mid and B though. Krems just kind of holding T spawn for flanks. 
Now we'll start drifting that direction. That's who I want to see pop off this round, but Renegades are playing so very well across the board. Their aggression has been really well done. And there it is again. Yeah, it's that same one-way smoke that Jacob has already bagged a couple of kills in prior rounds. There was a flashbang in, but just decided to hold down the trigger anyway. Gets rewarded. It is the terrifying prospect, though, on the side of Renegades that if Crims is having an off game and it's still close, what happens if he wakes up? Yeah. That is a huge power play that they have on the back pocket if it does actually come to fruition, if Crims can start to get some momentum. It opens up their default more for Fnatic. It opens up that A side of the map a little bit better, but they may not need it thanks to Twist Frag there at Ladder Room. You can see Crims already shifting off. Twist might be in for more as well. Him and Jacob have exchanged a few blows. No one fallen just yet. But that B attack is going to be coming in, Vince. That bomb is coming through the apartments. It's going to be on Jacob's rotation and on Liaz. The man that has delivered so very well for his team so far this event. Got a faction. Gets winged up on the toll booth. Time is scarce. It's running thin. Fnatic going to have to push on to B. That's a great start. The MP5 of all weapons is what's going to claim Liaz's life. And Jacob, perched at the back of the site, going to be able to come in. They nearly line up for him. He has stalled the bomb a little while longer. Now it's down to Gratis Faction. The Orpa, can he get it done? He's going to pick up the Desert Eagle and put it down range onto Brolan. It's all on twist. 25 HP to his name. And even if he can deal with Gratis Faction, there's a full HP JKS to deal with. Is he going to get it done? No, but he does land a headshot nearly. I think it may have been through the wall. JKS survives and will get the defuse so close that Renegades will move to an 8-6 lead. Good to see JKS waking up. He's had a bit of a quiet game as well. He was the number three rated player in the tournament behind Twist to his number two. I think Olaf's actually number one. Also, JKS was in the top five of kills per round and damage per round. He was having a hell of a first few games for Renegades, and now he finally wakes up here in this first half with one round left to play. This has been an absolute war. Each team has had a period of time where they kind of dominated the half, but it's ch changed sides twice. And Renegades might be the ones at the end who will finish a little bit better. Jacob is a real nuisance in this connector area. I'm surprised he has a good connector. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like, sure, you're not going to Molotov in because he keeps smoking it, but toss a couple nades in there. Try and stall him out with flashbang, something. He's constantly getting picks. Roll on, though. Gonna get an over aggressive gratis faction on the short. Claim the headshot. We're only running off one AK 47 here, though, alongside the UMP. Take him. Gonna get JW. Spins around. Connector is his house. And Fnatic are not invited. Crimson Brolan. Do they still bite down on this A hit? It looks like they're just going to slightly maneuver around to Palace instead. Yeah, dude, Jacob just slaying him, man. I feel like he's been one of the biggest pieces, one of the catalysts that have really helped Renegades come up the totem pole. He's been so good for this team as an entry fragger and a CT rotator. Can he finish off the job, though? Giving their position away as well with those AK-47 rounds. Going to smoke out jungle. That still leaves Connector Bear, and guess who? It's laid in wait. It's Jacob. That's a good flashbang. Lands on two of them. If Brian just holds his position, it could be curtains. He may not expect a second player there. He's got Jacob through. Does he anticipate a second player? He's looking with the angle as if someone's going to be coming from underpass. I don't think they realize this. That element of surprise could be so massive. Seven seconds to go. The bomb does get planted. And now Leah shows his hand. The element of surprise is going to become lethal. And Brolan, three kills already to his name. Opened up the round to Gratis Faction. Has to finish onto Azza. But Azza is just behind him. Is he going to kick the angle? Yes, he will. And Brolan spins around. But it's not quite fast enough. And Renegades will finish the half at 9-6 in the lead. An intense half of Counter-Strike, Vince. But Renegades dominated the early part of the half with the 4-1 lead. And while there was a recovery, they finish off with the final four. To transition sides with a 9-6. We knew Mirage would be a great battleground. Both these teams love this map, but so far, Renegades have been the better team. But will that change in the second half? We'll find out shortly. Stay tuned.
And welcome back, folks, here to the second half between Renegades and Fnatic. We are on Mirage. It has been a pretty close game, all things considered. I feel like Fnatic in that first half had kind of the bulk of the rifle round, especially towards the middle of the half, but Renegades really recovered at the end with four in a row to stay ahead 9-6. Now we get into the pistol round here in the second half. See if Renegades can keep it up. And that's the question, isn't it? And the second pistol could put them in very good stead on their choice of map with Train coming up next. Plenty of utility. It does seem as if we're going to see this A hit sooner rather than later. They're not going to be stalling too long. Nate's firing in. Liaz has been put down to 67 on the cross, but there is a thick wall of smoke. Actually, no, there's a slight gap in it. Crimson's is going to make the most of that. The bomb's been dropped. Someone's going to have to go and take that. And every second that they take to plant this bomb, Fnatic can get closer and make this retake that much more claustrophobic. Now the smokes are beginning to clear. And already JW is making inroads up towards the triple box. Nobody is going to realize he's in this position. And Az is going to lose his head as a result. He misses out on the second frag, but now all the terrorists are clumped up on the CT boxes. There is a smoke that Exis can toss out there onto the site. It's going to make things so much more difficult. It's just going to be a complete risk, but it's going to work their way. Jake Hess and Jacob perforate the smoke, perforate the heads, and Renegades get the second pistol round. Man, the tension was cut real short of this. Like, you see the smoke go down, and you're getting a little bit worried. You're on the edge of your seat, and in the blink of an eye, it's over in favor for the case. But that was certainly a very scary moment there when you thought he might pull off that smoke defuse. Also, Krems, like you know, to get in that initial kill really helped Fnatic put the pressure on Renegade's A attack. But Renegades do find their way through all that chaos. And out on top here, 10 6, four spy from Fnatic, scouts and couple of eagles and a CZ on Brolin. Crims misses his opportunity there. Jacob fins him off. Be another aggressive play. This time it's a flash over onto short by the Renegade. Put three players in. It's a bit of a stack on B site though. We've already seen that Deagles in Fnatic's hands can become real nightmares to contend with. Oh! Shot from Crims through the smoke. And again, he is going to drop the bomb. In two consecutive rounds, a two on four falls upon Renegades. And although Azar is trying to rotate around the side, because there's so many players from Fnatic alive, he can't make the most of gaps. He's going to be hoping for the best. He realizes it. There was two players around here. Brolan was also darting around CT spawn. They have the bomb under control on short. It's a horrible spot as well to retrieve. This is a nightmare for Renegades. They just ran into the stack. Especially that player on the close corner they weren't expecting. They had Crims. That was their focus in the back of the site. It's cost them dearly. If they reel this one back in, it would be miraculous at this. There's no time, really. That's it. That's the big thing. Hasn't had to have made that work, and it didn't, and now it's pretty much over. Liaz inspecting his gun, knowing that he may lose it soon. And hold on to those sweet memories, because this round is a done deal, and Fnatic will pick it up. A nightmare for Renegades who have literally nothing. They may even force it that low. Yeah, this could be that economic game of chicken, Vince, where you have to win two in a row to finally put the other team out. But Renegades could also just choose to tap out or pass out. And it looks like they are going to go ahead and force all the way against. <laughs> they are indeed forcing it up. Deagles. Utility only on gratisfaction. This, of course, is also going to stymie his AWP funds yep. later on in the half. It's actually going to make him two or three rounds away from that, which is a big deal for Renegades. They want that AWP in his hands as soon as possible. Okay. Hello. House has is still alive, and he's only taken 26 health in damage. So he just gets a clean one deke, and now Fnatic has to rotate. Dude's already up on ticket booth. He just snuck all the way in. They have no idea JKS is forward already. I have to imagine. And they're going to try to pinch through B. They're going to try to use JKS as the flank through market. It's all going to come down to timing whether he gets picked up on, though. Very similar thing to this yesterday against Isaurus, except it was Azza. Oh, still JKS. Left. This is the perfect player to have in this position, by the way. He's so good at timing these things out. Will it work here, though? 
Well, he's already rattled off a few rounds at JW. Cue the Jaws music. He snaps him up. Bomb was headed towards B. Now going back to mid. They want to keep their options open. They could still fiddle the through connector. There is a scout here and a grenade that Azza can pick up. They just stay with Deagle, but long range. This is where Twist has got to be pristine with his aim. Liaz will take his head. 15 seconds, and now Fnatic getting into position. That grenade almost ends up killing Broland, but he's alive long enough to deal the fatal damage to Jacob alongside Exist, and JW gets the rest. Fnatic just about hold on. There was a brief moment where you thought Renegades might steal that one away with JKS's positioning. The sneaky player finding his way in window room, but he was picked up on, and that pretty much shut it down. So that lead that Renegades was building up after having one pistol and being up 9-6 at the half is starting to get eradicated, and it's only going to get worse here as they have nothing to go with. Just one pop flash flood out of Palace, which, based on how the CT's position, there is some hope that they get a bomb plant. If they can somehow just hold Brolin off that ticket and get to default spot, they might at least get the bomb cash. Yeah, that's, that's very true, but they've actually been a bit slowed down because of the player of Crims who was spamming up through jungle. If Crims wasn't there, I completely agree. I think the flash goes into a bomb plant and Renegades get the success. Instead, they just get mowed down. Yeah, still no AWP going to be there for gratisfaction, by the way, because of that force buy. So it's just going to be AKs across the board. Very similar to Fnatic in that they can play the mid control very, very well, but also do favor the fast light splits. It looks like they're going to kind of go for that already. Jacob, normally a mid player, doubling up at A with JKS, the normal player on that side of the map. As and Lee as looking to push underpass. They want to do a connector A split, I believe. Gratisfaction will eventually fade back and grab this bomb, and they're going to go three up ramp to connector. I think it's the game plan. Grenade did land on Gratisfaction, who, of course, still doesn't have the orb. Would love to have it right now. Instead, it's a Galil. And they're just going to pile outside of A. The bomb's still back at spawn. Someone's going to have to go retrieve that. This is all vital time that could end up costing Renegades dearly. Roland's going to hold on. Azza from the backside, forever the look. Waiting for that second player to show his hand. Doesn't want to take any risk, but does go down. Unfortunate. You really feel for Azu. He did everything right, but needed somebody else to pick up. Needed somebody else to help him. Gratisfaction now with the Galil. Gonna get the drop on Brolin, but he's taking so much damage through the smoke. And Crims will be putting the last bullet into him. We're all even again, Dust. Man, I feel like it's just the A players that are just crushing it right now. The A rotators. Jacob, for his respective team, and then Brolin on the other side. Neither A player for... The T sides of these teams have had any success. We talked about how Crims was very quiet on the A side of the map as a terrorist. And, it, you know, JKS is normally the guy that's going to have to be making plays over there. But the shutdown from Brolin. So it's really been a war of the A bomb site. And typically the CTs have been giving a lot of problems over there. That's definitely a matchup to keep eyes on for the rest of this game as we are at 10 10. So it's, uh, let's do or die time for this map. Especially with Renegades on a force here. on nearly max round loss bonus they should be okay to get some guns in the next round but in terms of this one it is incredibly limited on utility they've got firepower just getting into the site that's going to be the problem twist shuts down another window boost nearly got punished from that from azza That barrel of the gun just stick around the corner. I think it was, and Twist's gonna oh, down to six HP. Fortunately, though, the rest of his team is helping him out, and Renegades are gonna go down without taking a single casualty with them. Fnatic regained the lead. Yeah, they've now won five in a row, Vince, and in three of the five, they've had five or four players surviving. So they're starting to really build up that reserve cash. The utility's always going to be there. JW. We'll be opping. So this is how it goes now. JW does a lot of the CT side AWP work, whereas Twist takes on a lot of the T side opping. So just wanted to point that out in case people were confused. JW will be patrolling middle here, but I think this utility is going to push him off. He's actually trying to hang around for something, but eventually does have to draw back, and Gratisfaction finds Grims in the connector. This is why they wanted him with the AWP. He can get those picks. Exist dropped down dangerously, low 23. Roland spots JKS, catches him with a nade out. 
Azarel Sweat opening up connector. They're going to be trying to make the most of this. Jacob Towns from behind of short. But Twist now realizing he has to get himself on that A site as soon as possible because Brolan is still on Tetris. And the bomb again from Renegades yep. is at T spawn. Yeah, normally they, because the thought was they wanted to fade back from middle of entry and go back and grab it, but the way things have played out, it's very hard for them to do so. And now, it's just going to come down to timing because this is giving Twist so much room to perhaps get the 1v1 on Jacob now and then have a 1v1 later on the bomb carrier. But it's all going to come down to how they maneuver because Jacob is getting away, it seems like. Can Twist catch him? No. Jacob goes underpass. No way for Twist to pick up on this. And he's still thinking it's A, so this is actually the perfect little maneuver from Renegades to shift that bomb towards the B bomb site. And you have to imagine if they plant at B, I mean, does he go for it? I don't really know. I mean, their money's there. He certainly could. But retaking B by yourself on Mirage with limited utility, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, both players are weak. He might know that. Bomb has been planted. Suppose it comes down to if one of his teammates called, they actually saw like the dink animation. If he knows that both players are like, you know, very, very low, maybe it's more enticing, but I think the fact he picked the AWP up suggests to me that he may just be saving. Because in a clutch like this, you want to have a, an automatic gun. You want to have the AK, mm -hmm. right? Also, this could give them a chance to... I mean, either he can get that AWP over to JW, who actually is pretty low on cash right now, at least when it comes to buying an AWP, so that'll be helpful, or they certainly are a team that will run the double awp you know twist normally a b-side player on ct side so he could be using it for like b apartments or something while jw continues to patrol middle in the a side so definitely one of these maps where double awp can be very very dangerous actually jacob oh, yeah. dies on the bomb explosion so <laughs> kind of gets gifted a free one there oh that is rough look at the economy here dust two of them are 3.5k they actually needed to save that gun absolutely they did that's a tough one to have happen so, AWP does get tossed back to JW. Twist has a, an option here. He's got $7,800. He could easily afford the second AWP if he wants to, but no, chooses to AUG and gets utility. But yeah, man, Renegades, this is a tough one. You can still get AK, sure, but it's going to limit your utility if you do. Galil chosen for Liaz to be able to get just an extra smoke and flash involved. A little bit of a tactical timeout as well, just to kind of weigh things up it's tense now it's 11 11 renegades have finally won a rifle round after losing five rounds in a row so they've tied it right back up as soon as fanatic caught up they get hold off from taking the lead for too too long so it's down to the wire additionally crims is starting to get into the swing of things a little bit one of the best ct sided mirage players in the world he is so damn good and we've already talked about if he starts to feel it, things are going to get out of control. Exist, though. Orc playing sneaky around the smoke, but will be caught by JKS. He can't retreat in time. Mm. Three on three in the first 10, 15 seconds of the round. Yeah, very chaotic stuff over at middle. I mean, just opening default is Renegade. JKS actually does come middle, though, off the A bomb side to assist in mid. Gets a kill because of it. But I also suffer a few casualties along the way. The CTs decide, though, is the one that's kind of spread thin one to each site one still window and oh that's a a chance for grass faction to unlock the a bomb site but the shot doesn't hit jw still alive here at ticket booth and do they know crims is here they do and they find him and that's going to be what gives them a foothold in this round a little bit surprising on the peak because you'd think if they hear the orp rattle out the likelihood is that there's going to be at least one ak or one assault rifle alongside it maybe crims just trying the instinctual peak when they were both locking up connector to sideswipe them but it's put the rest of his team in a bit of a predicament here twist and jw it's all on jw twist on the other side of the map but it probably will be another save he may try and get to short to see if he can stop this with the org could have dropped the bomb out things could have got interesting but jks with a 3k is looking good there's the peak from gratis faction that may actually bait twist into going for this that kill so early on the round, when he has a nade, when he has a kit, that could be the moment that sees Twist come in here and potentially clutch this round out that should never, ever have been going the way of Fnatic. Nade barely touches JKS. It's a glancing blow at best. Surprising considering the trajectory of it. But Twist had no idea where the remaining players were. And Renegades will take a 12-11 lead now. Even if Gratis Faction gets them a kill, that crossfire the remaining two have was just so deadly, especially when you know where it's going to be coming from on the retake. 
no real way for Twist to work that out. I would have taken a crazy, you know, get the kill and a fast 180 flick for the second or something ludicrous like that. And so Renegades do just edge a lead, but look at how fragile both economies are. No one's going to have that big of a loss bonus anymore. Oh, Kratz Faction just got destroyed, fix. <laughs> Just looking the wrong way. Got a free haircut. Well, Crims not known for his. Uh, yeah, Crims doesn't necessarily go to the barber shop very often, but he'll be no. happy to gift gift out them. Bold is beautiful. You can say from experience. Bill nades across Except the board. For... Yeah. I don't even know where you're going with that. Like True. if I was bald, it wouldn't work. Let's be real. Crims can definitely pull it off though. I oh think yeah, he's. He... He... Especially that beard as I feel well. like it has to just be paired with incredible facial hair. Like, that's how you do it. And he does have quite the beard. Also quite the aim. As uh, Grass Faction just felt firsthand. His head got smacked in. And that's it without kits. They're going to have to play this a little bit carefully. They don't want to peek and give any lives away. They still have nades. They still got two smokes and incendiary with 43 seconds. That's not bad at all. As a, maybe gonna try and bait out as if there is a, a mid play imminent. JW can see the barrel of the gun, gonna land the shot. Not the kill through the wall, but it is definitely gonna sting for Jacob. He's on 12 HP. And these are the kind of positions in apps where you're scared about a potential nade. Oh, no. They're gonna back away with 19 seconds no to time. go. This is madness. Renegades, what are you doing? I, have you just given up? It's like the perfect storm where every time they were about to go for something, Fnatic would counter them in some way. Whether it was utility, whether it was damage being dealt through spam. Obviously, Crim's in the opening kill to disrupt, you know, their initial mid control. It just felt like every step of the way, right when they were about to pull the trigger, Fnatic did something to get in their heads. And that's tied up the game at 12-12. Again, this is an important game. Both these teams feel like Mirage is their best map. Both these teams have performed very well in Mirage in recent memory. Fnatic probably has a, a slightly better results given the opposition that they've gotten Mirage victories on. But still, even though this is Renegade's map pick, both teams knew, hey, the winner of Mirage very likely wins this series because this is common ground. This is where we can put our best foot forward. Remember, elimination is on the line, not on this map. It's a best of three, but this gives that team a very special edge going forward to try to get to those lower bracket finals. And it's 12-12. Again, money's tight for both sides. Obviously, Renegades knows that, and that's why they're buying around those guns they saved. But if they lose this fence, if this doesn't go the right way, I mean, it's going to be so hard for them to buy much in the next round. That's where Fnatic can maybe get that massive advantage towards map point. Brothers faction has already been hasted down to 1 HP. Jesus. The first player to die in round 24, nearly the first to die in 25. And when you have such an integral part of your lineup going down that early or getting weakened it really does have a reverberating effect around the rest oh. of the team now all they can do is just go for a simple a hit they have enough smokes to do ct spawn stairs and jungle and a couple of flashes but the problem is they have nothing to hold off a retake once they get that bomb planted if they can even plan it you can't hold off the ct position roll on in shadow as a with the mac 10 straight in Claims the kill into JW. Bronze gonna try and come out swinging. The best form of defense is a strong offense and gets warm, but JKS and Liaz both gonna keep Renegade slightly in the lead. Twist had the right idea, but a smoke there, of course. Not gonna know that for sure, certain. JKS gonna get the bomb planted as Liaz bodyguarding him. So what a turnaround from Renegades. Jacob is playing the long con as well. He's mm. gonna be looking to rotate through on connector side. He's gonna ruin their day. It's that kind of play where he needs his teammates to, to keep alive, but because Fnatic are being so slow on their aggression, this is going to put Jacob in there. And there you go, exist. And it's been smacked in the back of the head. Renegade's going to retake the lead, and that's great news for their finances. They're still not looking great, though, in that department. No, they're not, but they won the key round. They needed to stay afloat, and they knew that if they could, Fnatic's economy was not there. They cannot buy back. This is where Renegades will skate to 14. You would imagine... Unless Fnatic come out with some type of crazy force by shenanigans, which you can't put it past the Swedes to do something like that. Maybe some CZs in the right spot. Maybe a cheeky push through 
palace or something could get you a key kill to still cause a lot of problems to your opponent. If you're Renegades, you just need to get Gratisfactions. AWP established that middle. He's been kind of thwarted the last couple of rounds, but there's no heavy firepower to stop him this time. Hopefully you can roll that out. Again, not really sure what Renegades will favor. They are very, you know, since the Major, really, a team that's very versatile on this map on the T side. They're not reliant on one particular style of play or one particular execute. They're very well-rounded. And so they'll just kind of put their best foot forward, what they think is best for an eco. It is indeed a full eco from Fnatic. No force buying here, except for a P250 for Twist. So this should be, for all intents and purposes, a formality. This should be 14 for Renegades. There should be no way Fnatic win this. Looking for a potential timing play, but of course, Az is a step ahead of them. Let's get dinked instantly. So Will Ford is the second player there. It's Grass Faction, though, and he's the Orpa. No automatic weapon, can only feasibly get one kill before you get swarmed. Before the tsunami of oncoming CTs will drown you out. So an AWP is traded hands. Now Fnatic may want to just save this because their finances again aren't looking yeah. spectacular. I think if Brolin could have found an op shot through connector fast enough, they may have considered going for it. But, you know, no kit, no utility, limited funds. Need to save these two weapons to help have a full buy in the next round. It makes perfect sense, but not bad for a full save to pick up two weapons. All things considered. But Renegade's now one step closer to map point. One step closer to the 1-0 advantage in this key best of three where elimination is very much on the line. I mean, that's that's an excellent result. If you consider that Renegade's economy is not great. I mean, JKS, Liaz, both down to about $3,000. Same with Jacob. And Fnatic now have an AK and an AWP for free. That's a really good result. They probably couldn't have helped for, hoped for any better. Now they can come alongside that dust and, and get a really solid purchase available for round 27. Yeah, JW has a really good spawn in the peak window, so we'll see if that's indeed what he wants to do. Could go obviously B side as well, since there are already three CTs on the A bomb side. Indeed, he will solo B. Exist and Crims playing connector together, Twist and Brolin holding the A site. So a little bit of a different formation here from Fnatic, and JW might find himself something. Catches Azza in the crotch through the wall. That is not <laughs> where you want a bullet to land, Vince. It's one of the worst locations, but that's where it's fit at. I thought he was going to get baited out there because the AWPA jumped yeah. across. So mm -hmm. I thought Gratisfaction would have had him. I had no hope that JW was going to get anything from that encounter. But not only does he get the kill, he also survives and pieces back to the site. So they can keep four players from Fnatic in mid and on a site just leave JW by himself. That is a huge moment in this round. Really gives the edge over to Fnatic. And JW will just continue to solo hold this. He doesn't really have much assistance. The rotation he needs would have to be kind of a cat flank from Fnatic. And they can't even know if someone's top middle. So they might be a little bit slow, depending on how fast Renegades attack this B bomb site. JW will be called upon to do more. I have to feel he's going to have to land one kill or just peace out of there and wait for the rest of the team. Yeah, he's going to give this up. Intelligent. If he stands his ground, he's almost guaranteed to die. Liaz oh. going to get smacked down nearly through the smoke. Down to 26. That would have been a disgusting kill that could have stalled the bomb plant a little bit longer. Right idea on the nades as well. There's only so many places you can be as a terrorist in this situation. About to get hot and heavy behind the car, but JKS fortunately not going to have to worry about spreading too early. JKS pops up. Going to be able to knock two players down. And now it's down to Crims to try and clutch, and he wants no part of this. Renegade's gonna make the round work after losing the first player. And it's because of how good their executes are, Vince. We mentioned this earlier. They are a very well-rounded team. They're not reliant on just default. They're just, you know, loosey-goosey plays, scrappy CS. They are very good at some of these set pieces, something you feel like Kassad's kind of brought to the table. Well, so much Molotov coverage on the site. Even if JW wanted to hang around, there was no way. There was nowhere for him to stand. The whole site was just covered in an inferno. Great smokes as well to hold them off at the market. Even with all the nade damage and spamming that Fnatic did on the retake attempt, it just didn't matter. It was very key that that Molotov that came van did not land deep enough to flush JKS out. And he steps up to the plate, knocks it out of the park. That is why he's one of the top-rated players in this tournament. 
and leading in kills and damage per round, it's because he knows how to time those moments out so effectively. And that puts Renegades in the driver's seat to finish this one off. It's, it's been an intense game. It's been very close. There's been several moments where you felt like it could be the other team taking the victory instead, but Renegades have held firm through it all. Have won five of the last six and won that really key economic war here towards the end of the game. That's definitely been opportunities for Swedish squad to get this under their favor, but Renegades, all credit to them, as you say, I mean, showing so much tenacity and grit to stay in here when they've had low buys, to stay in here when they have been repelled and taken quite a few hits and bruises. But now as it stands, they have three map points. The map they had to win. Crim's coming up, may get the upper hand onto Azza. Does. And it's a clean kill at that. JWL Sweat putting bullets to Liaz. And Brolan is the only fanatic player that's dropped so far. You can add Crimson to the mix as well. But exists now. Cheekily up close with the Deagle. Gonna be smoked out so he can stay alive. This focuses the attention on him, along the rest of Fnatic to swarm onto Jacob. Fnatic live one more round. Two more to go. Man, look at this. In case they don't have that much money, they tried to just get this thing over with with a quick A play. They thought surely Fnatic aren't going to have much utility to stop us from storming A. Maybe the pacing change, something we haven't really done yet, will catch them off guard, but no Fnatic called firm. And honestly, this is a declaration of intent for Renegades. They're just going Eagles. There's very little threat they can pose here. They're just going to play for round 30. And you can't blame them. The money wasn't really there. It was either going to be two kind of shit force buys or one really good one to try to finish this off in regulation. And they've elected the more conservative and, and likely probably the best approach. With that i want to rush into two potentially very poor for force buys instead gonna give themselves a chance still with desert eagles can't completely take this for granted the eagles do pack a punch but so does jw with the orc surprised that didn't outright kill ground faction down to 21 legs him exist also in proximity as ground faction lands the deagle headshot onto jw not gonna be much of an issue if fanatic can tie this up a neat little ribbon, not losing any more players. They can easily pick up that up from window. But it does mean that if Renegades get a couple more kills, things are going to start to get quite sketchy for Fnatic on their last potential buy, assuming they do even win this round. Are we going to see overtime? Is the question, Vince. The other game went to overtime, by the way. Energy G2 in overtime on map one over there, the other lower bracket semifinal. So we might be greeting them with extra rounds as well. Exist is going to go into JKS. We had an overtime matchup last night. Multiple. Go. <laughs> yeah, multiple overtimes. There's the bomb down. That's the round done. Liaz, though, going to make it sting a little bit more. And they do pick up the AWP as a result. So, the full 30 round, ladies and gentlemen, Renegade's going to have a solid buy. Double AWP finally comes out from Fnatic. I was wondering if we were going to see it at some point. That could be the adjustment that Renegades are not ready for. You know, you've been used to JW kind of patrolling B, middle, but now Twist is also going to be on the board. So those ops can be multiple places. It'll be JW mid, Twist B. Brolin taking aggressive stance at A ramp. So finding early information, perhaps. It's going to be a B play though for Renegades. How fast will it come though? Will it beat the rotation? Question is that it's so far to walk one trade. Liaz though, into exist. Bomb's gonna get planted. Gratisfaction elsewhere falls with Liaz being on 13 HP. That grenade. Oh, Molotov could have finished his life off. There's another nade in, and it's gonna land by the feet of Liaz. The advantage falling firmly for the Swedish team. But Jacob has a remain. Jacob push up in the ladder room is gonna go unchecked. And administers a lethal dose of AK rounds. It's got a molly for the bomb, but there's a smoke to extinguish. Indeed, it is two separate angles they have to watch out for as well. This is going to keep them unawares. Azza in the perfect position to spray through the smoke. And he's going to double up and get Renegades across the line. It went the distance, but they're going to win their choice of Mirage. Train comes up next. And that's such a statement to win on Mirage, a map that... 
Fnatic are so, so strong on in a higher ranked team and have been even more impressive lately, if we're honest. But Renegades have dealt with the stand in issues. But now that they've gotten Gratisfaction back on board, they seem to be back on that trajectory we saw at the major where they looked oh so impressive. That was a big, big win. Yeah, the boys, but they're not quite there yet. They still need one more map to move on to the lower bracket finals. But at least now they have that third map safety net at the very least. But this is Dust, and with me is Vince over here on the secondary stream. We'll be here all day. We have three best of threes for you. This is just the first one. We'll start promoting teams to playoffs after this series. We appreciate all of you for tuning in. If you enjoy, you can hit us up with the follow. Exclamation point, cast us in chat. We'll give you links to us. But we will be taking a short break. When we come back, we'll be bringing you map two between Renegades and Fanatics. So stay tuned.